Today, let's embark on an extraordinary journey into the realm of astrobiology and ponder over one of the universe's greatest mysteries, alien germs. Yes, you heard that right. We're talking about the possibility of life forms, specifically microbial life, that are not of this world. It's a concept that stretches our imagination and challenges our understanding of biology. Imagine for a moment life forms that have evolved entirely independent of Earth's environment. On our planet, life has followed a path defined by our unique conditions, a specific atmosphere, a certain range of temperatures, and an abundance of water. But what about life on other planets or moons, where conditions are radically different? That's where the concept of alien microbes comes in. We're accustomed to thinking about life in terms of DNA and RNA, the building blocks of life as we know it. But in the vast expanse of the universe, who's to say that life couldn't be based on completely different genetic materials? Imagine organisms using something like XNA, xenonucleic acid, or PNA, peptide nucleic acid, instead of the familiar DNA double helix. This change could redefine everything we know about genetics and heredity. The diversity of life on Earth is bound by our carbon-based biochemistry, but what if life elsewhere is based on another element, like silicon? Or what if, instead of water, another liquid like ammonia serves as the basis for life's processes? These possibilities point to types of alien microbes with metabolic pathways and cellular structures that are, quite literally, alien to our understanding. On Earth, extremophiles have shown us that life can thrive in the most unexpected and harsh environments. Now let's apply that to the cosmos. Think about microbes adapted to the intense radiation of a planet close to its star, or organisms flourishing in the icy high-pressure worlds of distant moons. These extremophiles could be nothing like what we've seen before. This is where astrobiology comes into play. It's a field that combines elements of biology, chemistry, geology and astronomy to hypothesize and research life in the cosmos. Astrobiologists look at Earth's extreme habitats to understand how life might manifest in different parts of the universe. They're the cosmic detectives piecing together clues about how life could exist beyond our planet. What if the classic War of the Worlds scenario flipped, and we humans found ourselves on the receiving end of a microbial invasion from space? It's a twist on H.G. Wells' famous narrative, but one that piques the curiosity of scientists and space enthusiasts alike. In our hypothetical reverse war of the worlds, we're not battling tripod machines, we're up against something far smaller yet potentially more deadly, alien germs. Our immune system, a product of millions of years of evolution, is adept at handling Earth-based microbes, but alien germs, that's a whole new ball game. These extraterrestrial microbes could be so radically different in their biological makeup that our bodies might not recognize them as threats, leaving us vulnerable to their effects. The intrigue here lies in the unpredictability. Unlike Earth's pathogens, which have evolved alongside us, alien microbes would come from an environment entirely alien to ours. This means their impact on human biology could range from being completely harmless to devastatingly harmful. The scary part? We currently have no way of knowing which end of the spectrum these hypothetical alien germs might fall on. This is why planetary protection is such a big deal in space exploration. Space agencies like NASA and ESA take great care to avoid contaminating other celestial bodies with earthly life and vice versa. The goal is twofold. Protect those extraterrestrial environments for scientific study and ensure any potential alien organisms don't make their way back to Earth. Astrobiology, the study of life in the universe, isn't just about finding aliens, it's also about understanding the possible biological risks they pose. By studying extremophiles, organisms that live in Earth's harshest environments, scientists hope to gain insights into how alien life might survive and how it could interact with human biology. Thinking about future space missions that might bring back samples from Mars or other planets, the concept of quarantine suddenly becomes very relevant. These missions are planning strict quarantine measures to ensure that any potential alien microbes are securely contained and studied in biosecure environments. It's a bit like the cosmic version of customs and border protection. Space exploration is not just about boldly going where no one has gone before. It's also about ensuring we don't accidentally turn these alien worlds into a petri dish of earthly microbes, or vice versa, bring back some extraterrestrial microbe that could wreak havoc on Earth. 
This is the realm of planetary protection, a crucial aspect of space missions, especially those to places like Mars or Europa, which might host life. When we send spacecraft to other planets, there's a risk of forward contamination. That is, our space probes could carry Earth-based microorganisms to these other worlds. This could be problematic. Imagine discovering what we think is alien life on Mars, only to find out it's actually a microbe that hitchhiked from Earth. This would not only muddle our search for extraterrestrial life, but could also potentially harm any indigenous life forms. On the flip side, there's the concern of backward contamination. This happens when we bring back samples from other celestial bodies to Earth. What if these samples contain alien microbes? Introducing them to Earth's environment could have unforeseen and potentially dangerous consequences. It's like the plot of a sci-fi thriller, but it's a real concern for scientists. Let's take NASA's Mars Sample Return Mission as an example. The level of care taken to avoid contamination is extraordinary. The mission involves collecting samples from Mars and bringing them back to Earth for analysis. But it's not as simple as just scooping up Martian dirt and flying it back home. These samples will be meticulously contained and sterilized to prevent any Martian material from leaking into Earth's environment. Similarly, spacecraft heading to Mars go through rigorous cleaning and sterilization processes to ensure they are as germ-free as possible. This includes using heat, radiation and chemical treatments to kill off any earthly microbes that might be tagging along for the ride. But here's the catch. Completely sterilizing a spacecraft is incredibly challenging. Some hardy Earth microbes, known as extremophiles, can survive extreme conditions, including the vacuum of space. So, scientists have to balance between sterilizing the spacecraft and not damaging its sensitive instruments. Planetary protection isn't just a regulatory hoop to jump through. It's about preserving the integrity of our search for extraterrestrial life and protecting our own biosphere. It's a testament to our responsibility as we explore the cosmos, to explore without causing harm either to other worlds or to our own. As we advance in our space endeavors, planetary protection will continue to be a key consideration, whether it's setting up a base on the moon, sending humans to Mars or exploring the icy moons of Jupiter and Saturn, ensuring we do so responsibly will be crucial. It's a balancing act between our curiosity to explore and our duty to protect. What would happen if our immune system, honed through millions of years of evolution on Earth, suddenly faced a completely alien microorganism? It's a scenario straight from the pages of science fiction, yet it brings up fascinating and very real questions about our biological defenses. Let's start by understanding our immune system. It's like Earth's biological security guard divided into two teams, the innate and the adaptive immune responses. The innate is like the quick response team, dealing with general threats, while the adaptive is more specialized, remembering and targeting specific invaders based on past encounters. Against Earth's germs, it's a pretty solid defense. But alien microbes, that's uncharted territory. Imagine a microbe from another world interacts with human cells. It's like an invader speaking a language our immune system can't even begin to understand. With no evolutionary history or prior exposure to guide it, our immune system might find itself completely outflanked by these alien entities. The problem isn't just that it doesn't recognize them, it's that the alien germs could have biological markers so foreign that our immune defenses don't even see them as a threat. But there's another possibility. Our immune system might recognize something is off, but overreact because it can't pin down the invader. A phenomenon we've seen in infections on Earth. In the case of alien germs, this reaction could be even more extreme due to the novelty and unpredictability of the pathogens. Sure, our immune system is adaptable. It's evolved over eons to deal with new threats. But alien germs, that's a whole new level of challenge. It's a race against time our bodies might not be equipped to win, at least not initially. Evolutionary adjustments that typically span generations might not be fast enough to counter an alien microbe's assault. Let's zoom in on the role of quarantine and biosecurity in space exploration. It's like something out of a sci-fi novel, but it's a real and critical part of making sure we don't accidentally introduce Earth to potentially harmful alien germs or vice versa. Think back to the Apollo missions. Those astronauts who first walked on the moon weren't just heroes, they were also potential carriers of lunar germs if any existed. So NASA didn't take any chances. They were quarantined upon their return, a practice straight out of contagion protocols, but for space. While it turned out the moon was sterile, 
this step was crucial for setting standards for handling materials from space. Fast forward to today and we're looking at Mars with keen interest. Mars is different from the Moon. It might have hosted life in the past or who knows, maybe even now. So any mission bringing back rocks or dust from Mars like NASA's planned Mars sample return mission is gearing up for quarantine measures that are way more stringent than anything we've done before. When these Martian samples hit Earth, they won't be landing in just any lab. They'll be heading straight to specially designed containment facilities. Think of these as super secure high-tech vaults, equipped to handle and study alien materials without any risk of contamination. Scientists working here would look like they're prepping for a spacewalk, decked out in protective gear in ultra-clean environments. Inside these labs, biosecurity is the name of the game. Air will be filtered, surfaces sterilized, and every single precaution taken to ensure nothing potentially dangerous gets in or out. It's about being super cautious, leaving no stone unturned, because the stakes are incredibly high. We're talking about protecting our entire planet here. This is all part of a bigger picture, known as planetary protection. It's not just about keeping Earth safe from alien microbes, it's also about ensuring we don't contaminate other planets with our own earthly organisms. As we explore further, say, icy moons like Europa or Enceladus, we'll need to be even more vigilant. These places could have oceans beneath their icy crusts, potentially teeming with life. As we continue our cosmic journeys, whether it's to Mars, asteroids, or the moons of Jupiter and Saturn, quarantine and biosecurity will be more important than ever. It's about respecting other worlds while safeguarding our own. The rules and systems we're putting in place now are not just for current missions. They're setting the stage for all our future space explorations. It's a fascinating blend of exploration and responsibility, all wrapped up in one. And as always, thanks for watching our video today.